When President Biden test drove a new electric vehicle from Ford, he liked what he saw. This sucker's quick. But the industry has a problem to solve before consumers get on board with EVs, charging. Experts say that concerns over charging are holding many drivers back from switching to EVs. That's sending companies on a race to improve the nation's charging network. It takes public fast charging to sell cars. People need the confidence to know that they're going to be able to do that. But building this new fleet of chargers won't be cheap. There's very much a chicken or the egg problem because you'll put chargers on the ground, but there's just not demand. Here's how charging became the EV industry's bottleneck and what some companies are doing to try and fix it. Charging is a surprisingly complex issue for the EV industry. One of the main challenges is that in many cases, it takes too long to fill up the battery of a car. The most satisfied EV owners, according to JD Power, are able to charge at home overnight. That can be done with the regular plugs in your home, but charging this way can take days to fill up a standard range vehicle. The industry calls this level one charging. Homeowners can upgrade to a level two charger, but that can cost thousands of dollars to install in some cases. Then there are drivers who can't charge at home at all, like many who live in apartments and rely on publicly available chargers. The research says that this network needs improvement. As of 2021, the U.S. has roughly 41,000 of the faster Level 2 stations available to the public. The Department of Energy says that by 2030, the U.S. will need 600,000 of these machines to meet expected demand. Private companies like Revel are stepping in to try and get ahead of these issues by installing even faster Level 3 stations. This is Revel's first super hub in Brooklyn, New York. It's stocked with a direct current power station to service Level 3 chargers. The industry calls these DC fast chargers. Paul Suey, the company's co-founder, says that this site is the largest fast charging depot in the Americas. New York City has a major problem, and the problem is charging infrastructure just simply does not exist. It is a challenge to find a studio apartment in New York City, let alone a charging site where you're talking about skyscraper levels of power. Revel says that its fast charging plugs can provide 100 miles of range in about 20 minutes. The company believes that its fast chargers could ease the anxiety of EV ownership for city dwellers who typically have to pay to enter a public parking garage before paying again for their charge. There's no paywall. You can access a charger for free, which is very unique in New York City. The second thing is, it's just a massive site. We're talking 25 chargers in one location. It's just a much better user experience. Revel isn't the only company focused on fast charging. DC fast stations are the quickest growing segment of the EV charging market. Tesla pioneered this technology in the 2010s with its supercharger network, which has more than 25,000 stations worldwide. But Tesla's system doesn't work with hardware from other manufacturers, and that represents another problem with EV charging. Many of the systems on the market are incompatible. In the US, companies are designing cars that use different types of charging plugs which is creating problems for people looking to fill up. That's fairly different from the customer experience at gas stations. In most cases, the nozzle at the pump will fit the car. That won't necessarily be the case for EVs. The industry is using a standard plug shape for level one and level two chargers, but there are three different plug shapes in use on the newer, faster chargers. Experts say that aside from Tesla, companies are moving toward the Combined Charging System, or CCS. But for now, drivers might need to carry dongles to make sure that their car works with the charging ports that they can find. That's a problem that companies like EVgo want to solve. Jonathan Levy, the company's chief commercial officer, says that their technical team is working to make their chargers compatible with all EVs on the market. We're currently in a process where we're installing hundreds of integrated Tesla connectors at EVgo fast chargers around the country because there are more than half the EVs being sold right now. And while other automakers are bringing more models to market and will continue to penetrate, Tesla drivers and EVs using Chatamo and EVs using CCS all need access to charging. The company plans to have installed 600 Tesla connectors across its fleet by the end of 2021. But in the race to make these new, compatible, fast-charging machines, the costs for companies and consumers are adding up. 
Industry experts say that building out a bigger and faster fleet of chargers is going to cost a lot of money up front before consumer demand picks up. Researchers say that an installation of a level 2 charger could cost tens of thousands of dollars, but costs for the newer DC fast stations could stretch into the millions of dollars. To cover these costs, EVgo partnered with a special purpose acquisition company to quickly raise funds, but red tape is slowing down the build out of its fleet. Cities and counties have really been hurt a lot on a budget basis across the country, especially in COVID. And so if you have a part-time permitting authority, that can really slow things down. When we think about how long it takes to build a fast charging station, it's anywhere from six to 18 months with exceptions on either side of that. And it could be a lot quicker if we were able to, again, streamline some of this and work on getting the flywheel spinning in this ecosystem. Some lawmakers in Washington believe that the industry needs help. And to answer your direct question, we have a deal. A bipartisan group, including the president and many senators, are calling for $7.5 billion to build a network of chargers along highways and in rural areas. But even if public funding materializes, the EV charging companies have to navigate other bottlenecks, like regulatory approvals, while the development costs pile up. That could leave some EV owners searching for a place to plug in for some time.